Well, I'm excited that you're here with us today. Um, we're continuing our celebration series with family party, de- uh, church party, child dedication. Um, and I'm going to talk to parents today, but if you're not a parent, stay with me. There is things in this message for everybody this morning. I am a parent of two daughters. My oldest is three and a half. My youngest we're dedicating this morning. Riley is six months old. And I think it's a joy to get to be a part of their life and get to lead into their life. And I think one of the biggest responsibilities and joys we get is um, getting to help develop another person in their life and their journey. Um, whether it's a child or a friend, getting to be a part of helping them succeed in life and helping them live out their purpose, I think, is one of the biggest joys we get. I also think it's really important that we mark special occasions in our life. With some of our traditions, we often do that in our family. We do it through um, important times with our community. Um, And I think even just in the small things day to day, there are things you can do to mark important points in your life. I was thinking this week about my wife and I, about seven, eight years ago, we were missionaries in Costa Rica, and we lived in this village of about a thousand people in the jungle. And one of the things that stuck out to me was this random celebration we got to be a part of. It wasn't a random celebration, but the random part will come in a minute. Um, The church was celebrating, I think it was, I don't know, 20, 25 years, 50 years. I don't remember the date, but they were celebrating a a big anniversary for their church. They gathered all the, a bunch of people from the community were there. They had pastors and people that came and visited from a ways away because it was a big deal for them. They were marking a special day. And I, re- I got to sit at a special table with all the pastors from that church and other churches um, around, because there's just one pastor from that church. It was all the churches. And they, they started sharing with me that they um, had this special dish that was their tradition to celebrate the anniversary of their church for all the pastors. And they were explaining to me in Spanish that there was chicken and pig and cheese and something else I didn't understand what was in this. And I was like, all right, this is going to be interesting, you know, Cuisine is different in different parts of the world, used to a lot of rice and beans and some other different things, great seafood that they had there. But I was like, what is coming on this plate in front of me? And so it came down on this plate in front of me and it looked like chicken with some cheese on it. And I cut in the mid- cut into it and started eating it and I realized they were serving me chicken cordon bleu in the middle of the jungle in Costa Rica. And it was just this random moment for me of how did they even hear about this dish? I haven't eaten this dish in the United States. It's not a U.S. dish either. But this is like a really fancy thing. Not that fancy was wrong, but it's just a random thing to be eating there. But it was their tradition, and it marked the moment for them. It marked it in my head as well. And I think it can be important for us to mark moments in our life because it helps us remember a decision we made or something we decided to do or something that happened. And so today we're marking child dedication, but I also want to invite you if there's other things in your life that you need to mark or get to celebrate with somebody else like I did. I wasn't a part of that much of the journey of that church, but I got to celebrate with them and mark that day with them. My message is titled this morning, Mark Your Moments, to mark our important moments and our time together. My first point today is that we're called to make disciples. And that's our responsibility for everybody that follows Jesus, that we're, we're supposed to make disciples of others, to lead people to Jesus, to help them walk out that calling as well. Jesus says in Matthew 28, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this point this morning, but to say that if we're a follower of Jesus, this is our responsibility is to share and disciple others. I think about it, especially today as we're dedicating children. As parents, it's our responsibility, but also as a community, part of our role is to lead them to Jesus. And the promise is that Jesus says, I will be with you for all of eternity. He is with us as we live out this. It's our role as a parent to our kids. It's our role with friends, coworkers, family that we care about to lead them to Jesus and help them in their journey. My second point along that line is that we're to bring others to Jesus. And I'm grateful for this especially as a parent, because I, I don't know about you, but I'm not a perfect parent. I try my best, but I'm not a perfect parent. I'm not a perfect person. And what I think our responsibility is, 
and what I know our responsibility is, you know, even today we're dedicating the children. We're not, we don't get to proclaim what their faith is. That's, they're going to get to, to lead that. And it's not my responsibility that they have to do something, but my responsibility is to bring them to Jesus and he gets to do the work. And that's our role as well. One of my favorite chapters of the Bible, I'm not going to read it, but Mac, uh, Mark chapter 9. And we see constantly parents bring their kids to Jesus and Jesus is grateful for it. He blesses the kids. He says, I am not too busy for these kids constantly. And in Mark chapter 9, a father brings his son to Jesus in need of healing. And he asks Jesus for healing and Jesus says, do you believe that I can do this? And the father's like, I do, but help my unbelief. And it's one of my favorite passages because it, Jesus wants just who we are. But it also reminds me of something that I want to share with you is that it's not our responsibility for their faith. It's not our responsibility to do all the healing. It's not our, our responsibility to bring salvation for them. Our responsibility as parents or friends or coworkers or whoever's in our life is to just bring them to Jesus. And he's the one that is responsible for completing the work as we bring them to Jesus. Right, and he is the one. In Luke chapter two, we see actually in the traditions were a little bit different, but the dedication of Jesus. And Simeon the priest takes Jesus up in his arms at the temple and blesses God and says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. And Simeon the priest sees Jesus, and he's still a baby, but he says, I know that this is the salvation of what's coming. And Jesus proceeds to live a perfect life where we couldn't. We've all messed up. We've all sinned. We've all done things that are wrong against God, against others. Jesus doesn't. He lives a perfect life. And Simeon knows what that's going to mean, that he's going to live that life, and then he's going to die on the cross, a death he didn't deserve because he was perfect. There was nothing he did to deserve that death. And he dies that death on the cross for you and for me so that we can find salvation in him. He raises to new life three days later as a proof that God has brought salvation to his people. And that's our role is to bring people to Jesus so that he can save them. And this morning, I want to just share with you, maybe there's some of you here that you haven't even taken that step of faith yet to come to Jesus and say, you know what, I am not perfect. I'm broken. And realize that, hey, our relationship with God was broken, but Jesus came and God sent him and said, I love the world so much that I sent my son and he came to bring salvation to you so that our relationship with God could be restored. All we need to do is put our faith and trust in Jesus and he will bring salvation for us. So this morning in the middle of our service, um, I'm not going to wait till the end like I normally do. Um, I want to invite you to pray with me. If you have chosen to follow Jesus in the past, I want to make this a moment for you to just recommit to following him. And if you've never made that choice, maybe this morning is the moment that you want to mark to say, God, I'm going to trust you. I don't know everything. Maybe you're like the father I believe, but help my unbelief. And you want to come to Jesus and just say, okay, I believe enough. God, help help my unbelief, but I'm going to choose to follow you. So I want to invite everybody right now to just bow your heads and just pray with me. God, We are not perfect. Thank you that you sent Jesus for us. God, we, I believe that you sent Jesus for me. I thank you that he died and rose again. And I believe in him. And I choose to follow you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, my final point this morning is that our discipleship and our raising of kids and others is a community responsibility. We're in this together. We disciple together. We raise our kids together. Thank you that I'm not alone in that with just my wife because it takes a village to raise kids. And I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 6 in in a little bit when Allie comes up to share as well. This is kind of the basis of what we want to share this morning. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. And when you lie down and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your head 
and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The people were to bind these words of truth. And some people took this literally. Some people still take this literally. They actually put it over their doorframe. They wear it on themselves as they go about their life. But we're to live it out, and we're to live it out in a way, it says written on our hearts, but we're to live it out in a way that our community can see. And the way that we live should be able to help point other people to God, that they would know who he is through our living. And we are to raise our kids in our church together. And part of our dedication that we're going to do today is a commitment for our church, if this is your church, that we're together helping lead these children to know who God is. It's not just our, the parents' responsibility. It's something that we do together, that we pray together for them, and we lead them by example and share with them towards Jesus. And I've seen this. Today, for all the parents that are dedicating a child, we're giving away the, the Jesus Storybook Bible. And um, I actually want to just shout out my wife in this because she's a lot better than I am at this. But every single morning since before Hannah could even understand that much, we would read a page or a whole story out of that book with breakfast time every morning. And what I love about it is my, do- my oldest Hannah, as she's grown up, she loves reading in general, but that book has become her favorite book. She'll look through it on her own and just look at the pictures that are in it, um, and she'll just be, like, she'll read through the whole thing. She'll just go sit and read through the whole thing. She knows many of the stories in there already because of that commitment that we've made of reading it day by day. And so I want to even invite you, um, don't underestimate the impact you can have by marking your day with something. Maybe, you know, it's a big moment for families today, but for you and you're here, maybe there's something you need to mark in your day to day, and there's a way for you to do that. Maybe it's starting the day with the Bible. Maybe it's taking time on your commute to pray. Maybe it's just saying, I'm going to mark my lunch hour at work to be intentional with it, and I'm going to look for somebody that I can encourage or share or build relationships with. What are the things in your life that you could mark your days with and that God will take that and do something extraordinary with it? I want to finish this morning um, by speaking to parents for a minute. And parents, you get to make decisions for your kids. And that includes, among them, bringing them to church. And I'm grateful for so many of you that have already made that commitment. Many of you are seeing the fruit of it. Matter of fact, I was reminded of that fruit this week um, because next week we're doing baptisms. And one of those getting baptized is a youth, one of the kids of a family in our church. The dedication of that family to raise them and lead them to Jesus. But I'm, I'm also reminded of the stark opposite of so many in our culture that are saying, I don't want to force a direction on my kids. Or I don't want to choose for them of where I put them or what I do with them. Because, but on the other hand, we choose so many things for our kids. We choose the food that they get to eat. We choose the activities that they get to participate in, the clothes that they wear. But sometimes we're hesitant to help guide the spiritual direction that we have for our kids. And so if you're a parent, I want to invite you to just choose to be very intentional about the spiritual environments that you put your kids in. Commit to being in church. Commit to the community that you surround them with and choose the influence that they have in their life. Surround them with people that will help bring them to Jesus with you and lead them to Jesus. Commit to being a part of church where others can help lead them and build in their faith. Dedication that we're doing today is not determining the faith and salvation for our kids, but it's committing to raise them in an environment where they're surrounded by God and God's people, people that will lead them to Jesus. If you just, if you came today and you don't have any kids, you know, come back to me. I was just talking to parents for a minute. Um, But it might not be your kids. It might be another kid that you get to commit to do that, but also maybe for yourself. What are the environments that you need to commit to how you spend your time? Who do you surround yourself with? Are you committed to being a part of a faith community? Are you committed, you know, we're going to start at the end of this month, our Tacoa groups again. Are you committed to be in a community of other people that are encouraging you in your life and your faith? Commit to being a part of it. And lastly, this morning, I just want to come back to marking special occasions. Today we're marking a special occasion for families as they dedicate their kids, commit to raising them in the church and pointing them towards Jesus. 
Jesus' family brought him to the temple, back to Luke 2 and verse 22. It says, And when the time came for their purification, the families, they brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. They were following God's commands to consecrate their child to the Lord. And King David responded by bringing, in his moment, he brought the ark of the Lord to the temple, and he um, responded with joy and dancing and celebration. When Solomon dedicated the temple, there was a party and celebration. God, time and time again through the Old Testament, puts in the calendar times for people to mark their year and their seasons by celebrating what God has done to provide for them. So I want to invite you this morning, we're going to celebrate with these families, whether it's your family or not, to mark this day for these families to celebrate together what God is doing in our church and in their lives. We're going to celebrate by hanging out. We're going to have some good food in a minute, um, but let's celebrate together.